everyone welcome back to rts and welcome back to another start to finish layout my favorite thing to do here at rts which is basically scrapbook and then a kit if i can have a kit and scrapbook i'm good to go for the whole day <laughs> yes okay so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to start my load 519 event and so um because that started may 1 and of course we had some national scrapbook day things going on those got uh my load got pushed back a little bit so you'll see that for the next few weeks or maybe over the summer yes because i want to tell you over the summer i'm going to um kick back and kick my shoes off a little bit <laughs> and relax um, meaning as far as uh, probably uh, doing series. And so I just want to play with kits and paper pads. I don't know what it is. I'm just kind of itching to do just those two things. So not that I won't be doing videos. It's just I probably won't be um, maybe creating any series or things like that because I want to finish up the photo series and I also want to finish up our go-to design. So I think that's why I'm kind of just going to put the brakes on some things till I finish those up because I know some of my subscribers are wanting to see them so uh yes they are still in the background being worked on so but over the summer i think i'm just going to play with paper pads hint hint wink wink and then also to i'm going to play with kits because i have been building a lot of kits so it's time to crack them out uh crack them open and crack them up <laughs> yeah we're going to have fun with that okay so the load event started may 1 and the load event for 519 is scrapbook magic yes reveal your magical moments so you know i'm gonna have to probably get some disney pages in there so on day one our prompt was and it was about harry houdini i don't really know too much about that uh, fella but uh, i seem like a little bit of uh, a centric um a daredevil i would say <laughs> yes gave eva knievel <laughs> A run for his money but anyways uh, Alice gave a lot of interesting tidbits about Harry Houdini who would have thunk so our story was what do you do and where do you escape from daily life and what is your best escape you know something you what was your best escape ever and the technique prompt was to uh, escape the rules make a layout <coughs> that breaks the rules <coughs> sorry I have to get a drink <coughs> I apologize for that. Allergies has just been a big deal for everybody in our household. I'm telling you. Uh, the pollen is terrible. <clears throat> uh, I'm so sorry. Escape the rules. Make a layout um, that breaks the rules in scrapbooking, meaning no photo, no visual triangles, etc. And, you know, we did that over National Scrapbook Day weekend. We talked about story-based pages with no photos needed. So hop back in last week and see what that is. So, of course, it was not hard for me to realize what is my escape. And I think for a lot of us, this is our escape. It's not hard to uh, take that connection of what's your escape. It's scrapbooking because it is certainly cheaper than therapy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and I think I put that at the end of one of my videos uh, for National Scrapbook Day. Yes, uh, scrapbooking is cheaper than therapy, but then that's unless there's a paper sale. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that is what I'm going to work on, my Harry Houdini. Um, what do I do for escape? And as I was thinking about that for the day, because what I'll do is I'll watch the video and then I write down what that story prompt is, the technique prompt, and then I think about it. And then, when, of course, whenever I think of a layout, then I'll jot it down. So I just write notes. Uh, I don't get to partake in it that exact day. Uh, because of doing the channel, I don't get to do both. It's one or the other. So of course I'm going to do about my escape and of course that's scrapbooking and usually during the load event uh doing a page about my hobby usually falls in there so that's always fun okay so I think what I'm going to do I don't think I know what I'm going to do <laughs> yes if you just want to hang out a little bit uh yes I think I'm coming down <laughs> from a little bit of a hyper episode. Uh, so now I'm kind of chill and I, <laughs> yeah, it's funny how the thyroid works that way. So I have my photo printed and uh, this was from a couple years ago and I was uh, having my layouts at the kitchen table and I had my uh, um, notebook, you know, my uh, desk, what is that thing called? Laptop there and I was typing up some journaling. So uh, that just is going to fit along because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this empty nest escape 
um, because I'm going to go into some detail about how scrapbooking and this channel and then all of you beautiful people have helped me deal with my empty nest in the last year. So this is very important for me to get this done. So it was a great prompt. So it's not just about scrapbooking. It's also about uh, some changes in me that has happened in the last year. So uh, long story short, I am breaking out and starting to play with my uh, Simple Story Spring Farmhouse DIY homemade knockoff counterfeit. <laughs> yes, whatever you want to call it. I will have the video linked below where I show how where I uh, built this and you can see this turned into and I kid you not a mega kit. And so only because uh, this spring, uh, Simple Story Spring Farmhouse was one, I this I really wanted this, okay? And of course, you know, I'm trying to do a spread and spending freeze uh, for this year. So I really, really wanted this collection. So I made it bigger so that way when this came out, then I wouldn't want to go buy it, okay? And I'm not going to go buy it. And so then the other thing is, is that I thought I would put this in my RASCOG aka project uh, planner on wheels and so I will give an update shortly how that's working and so I'm I just have that there and everything is uh, ready at my fingertips in my rascog and I'm gonna play with it for the majority of the summer until I get tired of it but the reason the main draw was is because this is my style absolutely the colors the wood grain the floral the farmhouse home life every day this is this is me you know and I think a lot of us are drawn to this uh, type of kit so simple stories really did a great job again that video will be linked below and uh, yes simple stories is a really good company so I wanted to show something uh, because I talked about this in our SOS series as I'm building kits and if I run across something else that I think will go with the kit that I've already done I will simply put it in with that kit so I found a couple things uh, and one I'm not sure I think I don't know if this was in the video but I um I had this in my uh, supply of six by six and this only came to my mind because I saw a lot of people hauling this a Tuesday morning so I'm like I have that so I threw it in this kit and then also um, I went shopping at Hobby Lobby had a gift card uh, that I needed to get used or I won't get any more <laughs> and I found some washi tape okay and this is the by the paper studio and it is called farmhouse so this is the colors, okay? Now I will tell you these colors also go well with a new Heidi Swap Wolf Pack, which uh, yes, that's on my wish list. So that is really good farmhouse. And then they had these individual, and so of course you know all this was a half off, so affordable at half off. I would not pay twenty dollars for that. Uh, and then of course I think these were a couple bucks. So. Even though this goes together, it does not, uh, it, there, whatever is here on the right is not in the tube, so it's fun. Um, yes, I like this, okay? This was absolutely a gift from my sister, <laughs> yes. So thank you, sis, uh, for my farmhouse washi, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm excited because, you know, this is definitely farmhouse, and then I did a knockoff with this spring farmhouse, so I wanted to show that. I have more things to play with. Not that I needed more things to play with, but, you know, hey. Okay, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play. Just play today. That is what I do for the month of May. And I'm already getting hot again. <laughs> oh, Lord. Wish I had a dollar for every time I'm cold and every time I'm hot. I could buy <laughs> the Simple Story Spring Farmhouse Collection. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, with the technique prompt that Alice gave us, she said, you know, break the rules. So I thought that's exactly what I would do. I would do something I don't normally do. So of course, rather than going to page map or scrapbook generations or scrapbooking cards today for some inspiration, I went to, I have a couple catalogs. Now I, I wish I had a close to my heart and a Stampin' Up! gal who lived like right next door to me, but I don't. But if you're looking for a close to my heart gal, we have two RTS gals, Kim Ferguson and Mary Johnson. Uh, and so they can pop in below if you're looking for someone, uh, hopefully do that. And for stamping up, I don't I don't know a stampin' up gal. So do we have anybody here at RTS that's a stampin' up gal? Please list below. Um, but I would love to know from you gals, how do you get these catalogs 
if you're not someone who buys a lot of stuff because these are not just catalogs these are idea books so um say I, i'll talk to my close to my heart gals because i know kim and mary watch uh is this something that you get when you place an order or is this something that you send out to your customers or how how does that work i would love to know maybe stampin up and close to my heart is different but i only have two of these okay and one is from 2015 okay and i don't even know where i got this um, oh, I think, um, one of my online friends sent that to me. I'm pretty sure. And then, um, close to my heart, Kim sent this to me. So, um, how, how do you get these? Because these are idea books. I mean, they really are. Okay. Now, if you're inclined to look at them and then want to shop, 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 maybe that's not the best thing, which that is the purpose of them. But what I decided to do, long story, I'm sorry, I'm chatty today, is that I decided to leaf through these um, catalogs or idea books as I call them. There is so much inspiration in these books. Don't get rid of them just because the products are no longer available. And I will tell you, I heard, what was the scuttlebutt? That stamping up is stepping away from Sizzix? Mmm, that is interesting. Okay, so if you want a little chit chat, I'll just talk about that right now. I heard that there's a mega lawsuit going on. And Allison, which is the parent company, company of Sizzix, is suing five other companies. Oh, yes, that's the industry scuttlebutt. So I will have a link below, and you can go read about that if you want to. I'm not someone to gossip. <laughs> yeah, but when it comes to the industry, I like to know what's going on. And so, yes, there's a lawsuit. Allison, which is, you know, Sizzix, is suing five companies i was surprised hero arts is one of them what was the other one um stamps of life stephanie and what was the other one i don't know but i also heard stamping up is getting away from Sizzix. so i'm wondering if that had to do with the lawsuit interesting scuttlebutt okay so if you're not interested in that let's just move on but i do like to see how the industry works yes not everything's all unicorn and rainbows in the industry as well is it not okay so uh, i decided to go and leaf through this and i saw this it's on page 113 of this uh, holiday expressions. And so I thought I would get inspiration and break out of the rules and do it someplace, not just a sketch. So here in the bottom right, of course, is a beautiful photo of a couple that says, love everything about you. And I'm going to use that. I'll put it a little closer. That's page 113. I'm going to use that. I think I'm going to use that as an inspiration. And as I'm thinking of this, I'll pull some papers, see what we get with. And uh, I'll get with the program here. I'm just a little chatty to, to chatty chatty today. Yes. Okay. And again, there's always a fast forward button. Yes. Okay. So with my spring farmhouse, let me answer some questions that I got. Uh, when I do my knockoff kits, I absolutely go into a cherry on top. I think they have the best images if you want it for, you know, your own personal use. And then I just save this as a photo, drop it into Microsoft Word, and then I just print that out as, just, you know, just print out the images. And that's how I use this as a reference sheet to, uh, to build my kit. So when this is in a bag... I know what it is. And then I also, too, I number my bags. And, of course, I, uh, you know, do an inventory of them. So there's been talk about that. Okay, so here's my photo. Here's my inspiration. Let's pick out some papers, okay? Now, I'm showing this entire process because I got asked to. And, uh, again, you can always fast forward if you want to see the finished page. Okay, so I just have all my papers here. I have not even looked at these uh, since I made this kit. And so with this in mind, which is really just a couple pieces of paper and some, I have six by six paper pads. See, I told you, this is what I'm going to work on over the summer is kits and paper pads. And in this case, I have both. Okay, so I'm just going to already, you can see here. In this layout, there is a bunch of layering pieces behind the photo. I'm going to do that. And I will use 6 by 6 papers for that. No sense cutting into a 12 by 12 So uh, I can already tell you this is the one. These can get put away. Why? Because, yes, that looks like a uh, farmhouse. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Love that. Okay. So, yes, I guess we're having a paper pad party. Are we not? Okay, so I'm just going to need a couple pieces of paper, and I can move that. So it's a simple layout, but it was a simple way to get started, okay? Instead of having to sit down and figure out a sketch and look for a sketch, and which I love that too. Okay, so with my photo in mind right here, I'll just put that there. 
I just kind of get a feel of, I don't go by matchy matchy. So I'm not looking for green. I'm not looking for black. I'm not looking for red. I'm not looking for those cream and uh, green flowers and my oak table chair, you know, kitchen chair. I'm not looking for any of that. I'm going my mood and feel. And this is home every day. Yes. And that's what this whole entire kit is. So anything I would pick would be fine. And I'm just going to pick a couple pieces of paper and whatever strikes my fancy is going to land on this page. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And so, of course, you know, is it hard to wonder what I go for? Floral. I like that. I really do. This feels warm and that feels warm and cozy to me. So I'm going to pick that. Okay. And what I do is I just keep my photo nearby and I'm just going by purely by feel, mood and feel. What do I like? What do I like? I already have floral, so I can skip that. Okay. Uh, I could move some of these things to give a better view. Okay. So that is probably going to be my main page. And so I need a background and then I need enough for a band. Okay. So basically that's all that was, was a band with a mat. That's all that is. Well, it was block with a band <laughs> with a mat. Okay. And you can learn more about that in our go-to designs. Okay. Of course, you know, look at that. <sighs> and yes, I love this entire kit. Yes, I love this entire kit. And so I encourage you, whatever your signature style is, whatever you like, build a kit around it and make it a mega kit and play with it because you'll never get tired of it because it's the things you love. Okay. Now there's a pretty pink. Oh, there's a gingham pink. There's a check. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me just show you the difference. You see how this pink buffalo check gives you a different mood and feel than this multicolored floral. Definitely. It's all about mood and feel. My whole life is about mood and feel. That's a very pretty pink. Green leaves. I wondered why I had postness notes on the back of these. Uh, it was to tell me what those were. Okay. So I'm just looking. Okay. There we see. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. That is going to be my, probably my background. And so none of those are working and I do not, I do not make this an hour process, but if I wanted to make it an hour process, there's nothing wrong with that too. But, uh, usually for me having a kit ready increases my process time, uh, you know, as far as getting to scrap and then selecting papers, it's easier to select from this stack than my whole space. And we all know what that means. Yes, we all can get sidetracked. And I like that yellow. Okay. So here I found something I like. So I will not go through the rest of this pile because there's a nice chunk there to find the perfect paper. I like this. So that's what I'm doing. Okay. And that's something you have to break yourself of. Okay. We've all been there. The perfect paper with the perfect photo, the perfect collection with the perfect punch, and then the perfect day to sit down with your perfect makeup and hair and do it. No, it doesn't exist. <laughs> no, we just wing it. Just wing it and do it. Okay. So, uh, that is what I will do. I have so many embellishments here, uh, even in this embellishment. And this is how I kept track of all the little pieces for this kit is I just put them in one of these Hobby Lobby paper, paper studio four by six boxes. You can get them. I think a dollar twenty-five. It's it's a crazy deal uh, when they're half off. A dollar twenty-five, and they're really really sturdy. These are actually better than the Iris brand. And so I have all these little bits and bobs. Okay, but I think I'm going to break the rules and do something um, something I don't normally do. I'm going to take this Martha Stewart Mega Punch, and it has this uh, leaf branch type thing. And I think I'm going to do some. A faux chipboard, meaning I'm going to punch out one of these and then punch another four or five and then layer them to make some faux chipboard. And I have a video listed below to show you about that. And then I think I'm going to build a scene. I don't normally do that, but I'm going to break the rules, do some, and have some fun. So what that means is that I will have this punch, okay? And then I will have these embellishments. And of course, I have, I have so many things in this kit. I mean, yeah, it's amazing how much is in here. 
I have all kinds of things. Look at this. Stickers and that and that and mason jars, which I don't know if mason jars will fit. Um, because I'm going to keep in mind my, uh, you know, empty nest escape. So it's just going to be pretty things. That's all it's going to be. Pretty things. And so that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So that is how I started the page. I'll come back and I will show you how I finished the page. But that was a little peek into the process of pulling out a kit and getting started and also to using a load prompt. So for the load prompt, you can take it two different ways. You can just uh, be inspired to scrapbook a layout a day uh, along with everybody else. Get your name into that mega uh, giveaway that they do. You know, you have to complete a layout every day in order to be entered in for that. And that is not um, why I do the load. I do the load for the story prompts and the story prompts only because uh, that's what I like. And then also too, she gives you, uh, Alice gives you a technique prompt. So I am going to do both of them just for some extra play. Okay. So come back and I will have a finished page about my empty nest escape. And a big thanks to all of you because of that. Yes. Okay. So hold on. Okay. I'm back with my finished page and I love how it turned out using that inspiration from that close to my heart catalog idea book. Okay. So if you look at the inspiration here on the left and that was right here to uh, how I translated that to my page, basically the same thing. Yes. Love how that happens. You can just look about at anything, especially any type of magazine or catalog and get inspiration. And we may have something about that coming up in the future. Yes, it's on the list. Yes, I need an assistant, I'm telling you. So, and I just found out today that one of our RTS gals, Julie, is a Stampin' Up! demo. She said she just does it for a hobby, but Julie, you need to tell us, how can we get one of these idea catalog books? How, how do we do that? Let us know. Okay, so uh, what I did was I just took those papers and the paper is this beautiful floral yellow dot and this teal. And I wanted to talk about those papers because I always find this so interesting even after all of these years of scrapbooking. Uh, okay, so first of all, I have three different manufacturers and then also to the years uh, that span these papers. Okay, so I have this uh, Prima paper, this turquoise paper. That was 2011. Yes, okay, that was a background turquoise. And I absolutely did gut some of that because this is a heavyweight Prima paper. Prima has excellent paper weight. So there's no sense, um, you know, that's where that would go. I gutted that because I will just put that in my kit and use it again. So then, of course, my floral paper is my mind's eye. And that was in 20. 14. That is from the Market Street uh, by Jen Allison. She's now doing some designing work for Echo Park. And then this yellow is by Chamel, the little by little, and that was 2016. So all those years, three different manufacturers. Fun, fun, fun when it happens. And then also to my layering, I use my six by six paper pad. Of course, I use this Chalk Studio 2 by My Mind's Eye, and I think this was 2014 too. Yes, 2014 as well. So isn't that funny? I love how that happens works so well when you go by mood and feel. You don't have to worry about year. You don't have to worry about manufacture. You just have fun. Yes. So I took my photo in the size it was in. Four by six. Already had a border. That's how I printed it. And then of course this photo is not a stellar photo. The lighting was very off. And it doesn't matter because that lighting being off helps with my mood and feel. So you embrace some of those non-perfect non photos. And then of course I just took some of the six by six paper pads. Uh, papers from the six by six paper pad and I used let's see I used um, a piece of this black okay and I just used the frame and then I went to a pink which was that and then I went to a stripe which was that okay and all I did was just layer those uh, caddy wampus you'll see that I'll put a little closer uh, that you'll see that my layers behind this is just blocks of paper and they don't give a complete mat. Some go to the left, some go to the right, some go up and down. So when I'm doing a fast matting of blocks from six by six paper pad, because you know our photo is four by six. So you can't get a complete mat as you get more mats behind. So I just do some tucking and some will go to the left. Some I shift to the right. Just have fun with it. And then of course my title says empty nest escape because that was from the load prompt. And so my journaling will go here and it's going to talk about how, you know, dealing with the empty nest, but then also to my escape from uh, the empty nest problems <laughs> has been this channel. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you a million times, ladies, because you have no idea 
how I have, um, it, how it's really helped in the past year, um, having something else to reflect on and uh, think happy thoughts. Yes, absolutely. So I used this Polaroid frame that was in my kit. I just had it uh, stuck in here with some journaling cards. I used it to frame, get it, frame my journaling. My journaling is going to go on top of that uh, project, this journaling card. So that is something I've been trying to use in 2019 is a journaling card. So you could definitely use journaling cards to do this tucking instead of six by six papers. And then also to your journaling cards. If you know how much you're going to say, use your journaling cards as a journaling base. And that's what I did. And you see some of that is over top of that frame, just gives it another interest. Okay, so as you're cutting down your papers four page you see how i had this my mind's eye floral paper and i cut it down because i wanted to see this prima paper so i have showed this in previous videos so if you look up here to top and i'll point to something yeah if you look here at the very top top okay i when i cut those two strips i took those two strips and I layered them on top of one another and it gave me a header up here. And so then it gives you a little bit a little bit of dimension up here on this floral paper without introducing another color. And all I did was use scraps. I do that all the time because I don't keep those. So I try to find a way to use them because I, I don't really keep them very much. And so then the other thing I did was I definitely broke out that Martha Stewart punch. And I'm telling you what, this is heavy duty. And then I took some craft paper because this craft color was represented in that floral. I punched it four times and then I layered them. Um, uh, really, I probably would have, well, yeah, I could only did, if I had 12 inch paper, I could have just did it twice. Okay. Cause I did have some leftovers here. And so then I basically just cut it in half and, um, you know, halves here and halves here. And then I did a shadowing fact. So I didn't layer, layer it exactly on top of each other. I just, uh, skewed it a little bit so you can see a little bit of shattering shadowing but it's all the same craft and so I have two layers here and two layers here but this is not 12 inches because my paper was only 11 okay and then I didn't layer too much because I didn't want I didn't want it to be thick here so then I just cut them in half and laid them in such a way that's all I did and I just used my quick dry and I would tell you when you're having thin pieces like this, you really need a fine line applicator to get these small pieces, okay? And so I will have the link below about my fine line applicator, and that really, really does help. Very. And you do not have to buy the bottle to get the applicator. You can just put the, if you get the right applicator, you put it on the bottle of glue or adhesive you already are using. And if that means call the company and double check, say, this is the glue I have. What applicator do I need? And they will tell you. Yes, I don't have that information listed below. So then, of course, my title, I just used some October afternoon little tile sticker, stickers. And then uh, my escape came from a, where's that? Oh, here it is. It was a um, actually a thicker, and it's in burlap. I mean, isn't that fun? Absolutely. Now, of course, you have to use adhesive to adhere them down. They won't stay. And then uh, my main embellishments down here on top of this Martha Stewart punch is that I took elements from the Simple Stories sticker pack called In Bloom, or no, I'm sorry, Bloom. And these stickers, I'm not quite sure. Are these supposed to be for planners? I don't know. As scrapbookers, we like it all. But I will tell you, these are very wimpy. There's not much to them, but they're still nice, okay? The colors went really well. So what I did for some of these is that I put foam tape behind them, gave them, gave them a little bit more substantial feel uh, and weight. Um, and so I did that with this speech bubble here that says, Think Happy Thoughts, because that is exactly what I did in the last year. And then, of course, the typewriter was just cute because right there is a keyboard. I mean, I'm going to use a typewriter when I can use a typewriter. And then all these other things down here, Fresh Start, Be You, A Heart, Bloom Into You, uh, The Tea Mug, and Today and So Hopeful, those are all purposely picked to emphasize my story and to reflect what I'm going to say in my journaling uh, about how in this last year out of my journey, uh, thinking different things, focusing on different things, and then also to following my own path. And so I definitely love this set. It really is nice. So when you're doing some reflective journaling, a very nice set for that. And then, of course, I just used one of these little stickers. And I'm going to show that right now because I just got to ask that question. These stickers right here. And I'll just show you what this set is. There's eight in a pack. Okay. And that is what you get. Okay. That is quite 
that is quite a variety of stickers. I just wish they would be a little bit thicker, but, uh, and again, this is by Bloom, okay? But look at the different sizes, look at the different motifs, and then also to the different wordings. This is a great set for fillers. So these here can be the start of small clusters. These here can be the start of big clusters and then also two big clusters, and then you have some motifs. And these bigger ones you can use as a cluster base. A cluster base does not have to be a geometric shape or piece of paper. You can use a sticker for that, and again, little fillers. And then these uh, absolutely subtitles, and then this, you can never have too many word stickers because uh, you can see that I use this as bits of journaling, okay? And that's what I did right here and right here, bits of journaling. Okay, so... Um, for up here, for my cluster base, I just used one of those small stickers. And I had a leftover piece of that Martha Stewart branch, put it up there, and I put a piece of flare, and of course a cross, because that is what gets me through everything in life. And I put on the flare, it says, not all those who wonder are lost. And that really has been fitting for me, because a year and a half ago at this time, I truly was lost. I was just binging all around. I didn't know what my purpose was, what I was going to be doing in the future, and I got really down in the doldrums. So again, thanks to all of you for helping me in that journey, and of course to the good Lord above. He deserves all the credit. Yes, can I get an amen? And so that's why I put that there, and sometimes I'll buy... Uh, things like this, and I think that it has to do with, um, you know, traveling, but sometimes it has to do with your own journey with your own self, and you know what I mean by that. So that thought that was really fitting. Uh, I liked how that went on there. And I think I'm looking to my left and to my right. I think that's all I wanted to show for that. My journaling will go here, and I will just type that. You know, I do a lot of computer generated journaling because I have a lot to say, and it'll just go on a piece of cardstock, uh, probably white, and you'll notice that I have white and cream mixed together and that is something I do not well I'll just tell you that's what Alice said in this technique prompt to escape the rules that is one rule I threw out the window I no longer pay attention to I mix white and ivory as if it was the same beautiful color yes I think it goes good together I think the whole farmhouse look has helped people with that there's no more oh you got to do this you got to do that no you mix it all and have fun with it all so that is how my finish turned on uh, my page finished uh, how I finished my page really like how it turned out and then also too I want to talk about the photo the photo is from 2017, but my journaling is going to be from today, uh, May 2019. So this, of course, will... Um, I say this all the time when you snap photos, even without the intent of scrapbooking that, because you never know what photo you have that you can use to emphasize your story. And so this will be... Um, even though the photo is 2017, the story is about today, May 2019. And so that's what year it will go into, even though this is 2017. And in my journaling, I will not even mention that this photo is 2017. That is not important, the date of when I took that photo. What's important is my journaling, and that is May 2019. So I wanted to talk about that because that is a question I get a lot when you do reflective journaling. What year are you putting it in? There's no wrong way, but I usually put it in the month where that reflective journaling is coming from, and of course that would be May 2019. So I hope that answered that question as well. And then I think that's all I have to say other than come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.